Coming up, latest from the governor on calls to reopen schools and bring back youth sports. Pushed by a local leader to move one group up the vaccine priority list, the change he's pushing for, and the life and legacy of famed Chargers coach Marty Schottenheimer after his long battle with Alzheimer's. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. And welcome. Good to have you here this midday as we uh, join you online today. Right now, the Senate impeachment proceedings underway. Debate began about an hour ago. One of the things being argued before the trial really even gets underway, whether it's constitutional. President Trump's lawyers and some lawmakers claiming that he can't be impeached after leaving office. His impeachment coming in response to his role in the events leading up to the Capitol riots. And you can watch the impeachment proceedings that are taking place live right now on ABC 10. Governor Newsom made remarks this morning on the state's plan to safely reopen schools and competitive youth sports. He spoke at a press conference for the opening of the 49ers Levi Stadium as a vaccination site. My commitment is providing real resources, $6.6 .6 billion of early action to help support that cause and to put out a blueprint that allows the flexibility of the counties, recognizing each county is uniquely positioned as it relates to this pandemic, but to provide those supports and guidelines that are not hurdles that are not achievable, but opportunities of supports that can get our kids safely back in school. And he went on to say he has released a detailed proposal on safely reopening the schools. And in the next few days, he expects to announce the details on that. New site opened in the North County this week, which offers vaccinations, testing and antibody treatments. ABC 10 News anchor Mary McKenzie is at Palomar Health in Escondido, where the new site officially fully opened today. There were 400 vaccinations given out here on Saturday and 500 appointments made available here today. What we have right here is what our nation needs, the triple threat against this virus. A triple threat because the site offers not just vaccinations, but also testing and even antibody therapies. Appointments for vaccinations and testing can be made online on the Palomar Health website. For vaccinations right now, the website says spots are full through February 11th, but that more appointments on additional days will be added soon. They also offer the monoclonal antibody treatments here, seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. A spokesperson for Palomar Health tells me they have about 1,000 doses of the infusion on hand, and they're taking appointments with a doctor's referral only for the COVID-19 treatments that have shown great promise, particularly in treating older adults who are most at risk of serious illness or who have comorbidities. This is the only appointment based drive through vaccination and testing site in the North County. The vaccine site opened Tuesday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Vaccines by appointment only to those who meet the eligibility requirements. And drive through COVID-19 tests are happening Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays here from 1 to 5 in the afternoon. Mary McKenzie, ABC 10 News. And we want to give you a heads up about the change in the South Bay. The Imperial Beach Vaccine Center is on the move. It's now located at the Mar Vista High School gym, but the hours of operation are going to remain the same Sunday through Thursday, 930 AM to 330 in the afternoon. You can schedule appointments on the county's website. Well, today, the Board of Supervisors will vote on a motion that would move law enforcement up on the list to get vaccinated. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell spoke with Supervisor Joel Anderson about his efforts. Right now, police officers and sheriff's deputies are not among the group that the county is vaccinating. And Supervisor Joel Anderson wants to change that. I was shocked and disappointed to learn that uh, law enforcement wasn't in the first tier. You know, we have firefighters, we have lifeguards. I was told, well, they give CPR and so they got priority. In a letter written to the Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Anderson points out law enforcement officers are routinely responding to emergency situations where individuals often require medical attention and CPR. It didn't make sense to me that they were being treated like lesser first responders when they're all first responders. So he's asking the Board of Supervisors to support his motion asking county health officials to allow law enforcement officers to get vaccinated. This would include more than 4,000 police officers and sheriff's deputies. 
The request comes as various groups across the state are pushing to get vaccinated, from airport workers to grocery store employees and teachers. Supervisor Anderson says while he agrees teachers should get vaccinated, he believes the priority right now should be on first responders because of their risk of exposure while on the job. Adding in his letter, law enforcement officers serve high risk populations daily in our jail system and on call in our communities. He goes on to say without vaccinations, they are putting their medical counterparts, their co-workers, their families and themselves at risk. Well, I think teachers are very, very important. Uh, when I call because someone's breaking into my house, I don't want a teacher showing up. I want I want law enforcement. Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. Chair of the Board of Supervisors Nathan Fletcher has pushed back against making changes for any group right now. He says seniors are seeing the worst of the virus and need to be prioritized. And we are following some breaking news out of Minnesota where multiple people were injured. One person in custody after a shooting at a health clinic happened in Buffalo, Minnesota, just outside of Minneapolis. Still not clear the extent of the injuries or possible motive. FBI and ATF are joining state and local investigators this morning and we'll follow the situation and update you as we learn more. Well, at the County Board of Supervisors meeting today, a vote to provide some relief to local businesses. County leaders sent a vote on a plan that would divvy up tens of millions of dollars among small businesses in San Diego. Now, that money is expected to come from the next stimulus package and they're trying to iron out details today to be prepared when the time comes. A couple of requirements. Businesses will have to be in compliance with health guidelines and have 20 employees or fewer to qualify. Another update on the ongoing talks over the next stimulus relief bill. House Democrats deciding against changes to who would get another full stimulus check. Lawmakers on both sides have been discussing the possibility of targeting checks at people with lower incomes than before. But this House bill would send full payments to anyone making $75,000 or less and those payments would drop off for higher earners. It would also expand tax credits for families with children. The Senate would have to approve all of this before it goes to the president's desk. Overnight, the family of Marty Schottenheimer confirming that the former Chargers coach has died. Schottenheimer was diagnosed with Alzheimer's back in 2014. He is one of the winningest coaches in NFL history, and many of those came here in San Diego. In his final season with the Chargers, he led the team to a 14-2 regular season record. He still hasn't been inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He leaves behind his wife of 54 years and their two children. Marty Schottenheimer was 77 years old.